Greetings and welcome back. Thanks for joining me again. Uh, so this week I got another review for you and it's a big one. Rubenstein's Coin Magic. Now I want to thank Dr. Michael Rubenstein for sending me this uh, for the purpose of reviewing. Uh, he wrote a nice little message in here. And now I've had this book uh, since the end of September and I've been reading it since then. Uh, in preparation for this review. So it's a big, fat, heavy book and it's taken a while to absorb. So I've gone through it, gone through it again, taken notes, and I'm gonna attempt to give my take on this uh, massive tome for you. Now, just for comparison's sake, here's Bobo's with Dr. Michael Rubenstein's book. Now, for thickness, it's just about the same thickness as Bobo's, but larger pages uh, with more text and more photographs, which is crucial. So uh, Michael Rubenstein explains uh, in his introduction, you know, this is an attempt to make a Bobo's of more modern coin magic, but in particular, all of his work. Now he's been publishing stuff for about 35 years. DVDs, books, uh, he has live lectures available. So his attempt here is to compile most all of his material, but not just that, it's filtered down to what he considers his best work. And part of the reasoning behind this was he got very ill from a heart condition. And this was gonna be his lasting legacy. So for that reason alone, this book is super important. It's one man's work over 35 years of what he considers his best material. So it is well worth your study and will keep you busy for uh, years to come. Now, I don't think Michael Rubenstein gets enough credit as one of the most important coin magicians of our time. Uh, I think partly that's due to the slow trickle of work he's put out. And there's a large gap where he was uh, working as a professional veterinarian and he was in college and then you know raised a family and worked and then came back into the magic community so I, I think a lot of his stuff gets overlooked but you do not want to overlook his stuff there's a, a great it's on DVD now but the encyclopedia of coin slights uh, which I highly highly recommend if you're into just moves you want to learn vanishes, uh, color changes, steals, turnover moves. There's, I don't really know how many different things are on this DVD, but I think it's only about $35. But that, uh, in conjunction with this book, uh, you'll have enough coin magic to last you, you know, three lifetimes. So I highly recommend getting that DVD. Uh, he put that out in the early 80s, and I, I know plenty of people that have never heard of it, but for one reason, I, I want to keep that secret into myself, but uh, I really recommend going to get that. If you want to play with a bunch of moves that'll give you inspiration for routines or help clean up some of your routines, uh, definitely get that. And so some of that material is in here and material from his other works. Uh, he had a book, Interme Intermediate and Advanced uh, Coin Magic, also from the 80s. and. He has tons of other publications that are, are listed in, in here. So anyway, getting into the book, got a beautiful uh, dust jacket here. There's the back. And uh, he explained inside, he made the book itself, this light blue cover uh, as an homage to the Bobo book, which is also a light blue color. So you can kind of see the similarity in that. And then so this book has 20 chapters uh, and it's split into two parts. Now the first part being uh, slights, moves, and techniques. So really that could be a book all on its own in reality because that comprises almost 100 pages of the book itself. And then Yeah, it actually is split into three parts. So part three, part two is all the tricks and routines. And part three is a bonus section 
uh, which is comprised of a bunch of puns. Now, if you're familiar at all with uh, Mr. Rubenstein's magic, he likes to throw in puns and silly lines, and that's just his style of magic. So, I, I do like that style, and you know, you're gonna you're gonna like some of these, and you're not gonna like others, but maybe you don't like any of them at all. But I'm glad he included that little section. It's it's fun to just read through, and you'll probably get you know a half dozen or a dozen lines that you can throw into tricks you do. And then the book finally ends with final thoughts and a section about the author. So breaking it down from the beginning, there's a forward by uh, Bill Wells and then an introduction by Michael Rubenstein himself. Now getting into the first part, the slights, moves, and techniques, he opens the book with probably the move he's best known for, the ROPS technique. Now, I've known about this for a long time, but I feel like in the last three to five years maybe, I've started to see it uh, done by everyone. So this is from the man himself, the nitty gritty tips and techniques on the ROPS move. Now I failed to mention, uh, along with the book, if you order from Dr. Rubenstein himself, he includes a free gift for you. Now, I was sent this fusion coin gimmick. So I, if you do end up ordering directly from him, uh, I know he, depending on what he has, you might get a, one of the live lecture discs or you might get this, I don't know. But this is a very inexpensive gimmick you can get from for yourself, uh, not that much money. But it's a penny embedded into a quarter. And this is, this is what the audience will see. So I don't think I'm exposing much here. Uh, this is what the audience will see and, and they can hold it and touch it. And just a great little uh, gimmicked coin. So that's a great little gift uh, to go along with the book. And the routine is in the book. So getting back to the first part of the book, the ROPS technique, you'll learn the, the basic vanish. And then there's a, a variation, new theory retention pass using the ROPS technique. There's a click pass and then a double click pass using the ROPS move. That's, so that's chapter one of part one. And then chapter two vanishes, shuttle passes, loads, and change over palms. And it begins with uh, three variations of the retention of vision vanish. Now, one thing Dr. Rubenstein is known for is all his original moves. And you'll, you'll see by reading through this book that Oh, this came from him. Oh, that came from him. And, you know, it's what magicians are known for is not crediting their sources or not crediting enough. So one thing he does here is throughout the book gives you great pieces of history on the origination of this move and that move and this slight and where stuff came from. And I just really appreciate you know, reading the origin of a move. So. You can explain your little variation, your little touch, but the problem is people just getting into magic or coin magic or card magic, they're going to think you invented this move when it's just your little touch on the move. So to that point, I think crediting is really important just to keep things straight and it's just a proper education. So he does a great job throughout the book, giving those bits of information where they're needed. but. There's just a ton of material in here that is original with him. And, you know, continuing through the, the Bronx take, the false take of multiple coins, a one-handed coin vanish, a roll down retention pass, which is a retention of multiple coins, fingertip shuttle pass, uh, multiple variations of that. And then there's loads, different techniques for loading coins into the hand. And then chapter three, getting into click passes. And he just has a, a ton of ideas on click passes, which for me is a vital technique in all of coin magic. When you can manipulate sound along with visuals, uh, it just puts you so far ahead with the spectator. So in, in this chapter, you're gonna get a ton of techniques for click passes, which Bobo's is very lacking. And for years, I that was something I was missing was good click pass 
techniques. So you're going to get that in there. Chapter four is spellbound moves. And this is one of my favorite sections of the book because he has a ton of great ideas for spellbound, different color changes. Uh, a lot of them are related to older moves, but I think are much improved uh, with what he's done with them. One of my favorite, one of my favorite moves of his, the soft change. Uh, this is something that's easy to do, and I think you'll immediately throw it into stuff you're already doing. So that's chapter four, just a bunch of spellbound moves. Oh, and something you see all the time by other people. Uh, the triple edge grip spellbound. That was Dr. Michael Rubenstein. So definitely take note of that one. In chapter five, false counts and useful moves. This is another thing that I consider vital to have in coin magic. When you can be one behind or one ahead with coins, you're going to be so far ahead of the audience that, you know, with false counts, it's almost like self-working magic because you're always going to get a freebie when, when you're vanishing multiple coins. If you're already one behind, you know, you always get a freebie vanish. So combining false counts and click passes, you're manipulating sound and, and you're hiding the fact that you have one less coin or one more coin than you have. It's putting you so far ahead. And this is stuff that's missing out of Bobo's. So this chapter is crucial as well. Just tons of variations on, you know, there's counts in here that resemble the Himber count. And there's counts in here that are more loose, I guess, uh, happen at the fingertips. Just a, a ton of great, a uh, ton of great moves in this chapter. The slide move, which is uh, something so simple, but you know, you don't, you don't think about it much. But there's, I'll get back to that move, uh, talking about a later routine, but that's become something I, I've been playing with lately. Now, chapter six is all about stealth palm. And this is a, a position for holding a coin that's really innovative. And uh, it's almost, it's crazy how it works, but it's all about the right angles. And you know, this is just one more innovation from Michael Rubenstein. So it goes through the, the details of finger position and display position and how to really take advantage of this, uh, this particular hold or grip. And then chapter seven, uh, additional techniques, and it's mainly going over his matting technique. Now in here, there's a, <laughs> I thought this was really cool, but it's a little invention uh, for pocket management. So it's a way to hold coins or sets of coins, maybe a gimmick coin, uh, in your pocket. And it, it's made out of playing cards. Uh, I just thought this was so cool. And you know, you already have the stuff to make it. And it's just a neat little way to, to keep, you know, if you have a specific trick that needs these three coins or whatever it is, this will hold those in your pocket. So you can reach in without fumbling, get what you need and come out and just a neat little thing there. So that, that ends part one. And then into part two is all the routines. Now this is, if you have the New York coin magic seminar DVDs, you'll see a lot of the material in here, but what's important is those first started coming out, you know, almost 15 years ago. So this material, it might have appeared on those discs, but what he's done is worked on all of that material over the years, improved things or eliminated moves. So what you're getting here is the latest and greatest versions of that material. So it, it's well worth your money. Uh, if you're afraid that you have this material already, uh, what you're getting here is that material improved and then new material uh, all throughout the book. So don't be afraid by that because while there is stuff that repeats, uh, it's better and worthwhile getting it just to see those improvements. So there's person glass routine starting off, magical change purse, no glass, uh, 
So all these start out with copper silver transpositions, copper silver extraction. And another thing I need to mention here is just the variety of material in the book. There's, there's magic with just coins, magic that happens in the hands, just in the hands, magic that happens at the table. And there's a ton of magic in here with uh, just quarters or pocket change. So you're getting stuff that's impromptu and you're getting material that's more formal that you could do a show with or you could do walk around with. And something I mentioned in a previous video is that it might seem odd at times that if you're at a party or a dinner, uh, non-magic related, and maybe they know that you do coin magic. So it might be a little bit awkward if, you know, you pull out a coin purse with old silver dollars and, you know, people are like, this guy carries around old silver dollars. So I think it's vital that you have a handful of tricks with pocket change that you could borrow. Or even if you don't borrow it, it's not odd to take a, a regular quarter and do magic with it. So for instance, the uh, fusion gimmick is a great trick just to carry around every day. It's literally no pocket space. It's one quarter. All you need is someone else's quarter and a penny. And this is a great introduction magic trick. It's quick, it's visual, and then more importantly, it allows you to continue on to uh, a, a more elaborate trick. So if you do carry old silver dollars with you, you don't have to begin with those. You can do a, a quick trick with a quarter and hopefully you can borrow that. And then afterward, you could simply say, if you liked that, let, let me show you something uh, really interesting. Then pull out your, your nice coins and just say, you know, have you ever seen these? Or whatever, you, however you want to get into it. But it's a great excuse to get into the, the more elaborate coin magic that we practice and spend the most time on. Instead of whipping that out right away and having people think you're a huge nerd. But <laughs> but along with that, there's there's a, his smileys routine, which is a, a signed quarter routine, a transposition, the smiley face. And then I'll get to some other stuff that's uh, in another part. But in this chapter, a lot of copper silver routines. And then moving on, it's oil and water with coins. A sub trunk mystery with coins. And then chapter nine, getting into wild coins. It's one of my favorite uh, premises. Uh, this is a great chapter because it's all about the Twilight Zone wild coins, which he performed on Penn and Teller. So he, he gives you the whole history of the inception of the routine. And then you get the full patter that he used. And then there's, it goes through the Twilight Zone wild coin show version. There's an impromptu version. There's a version with, with a cup. And then it goes back to the original handling. So I just loved seeing the, the metamorphosis of a routine that's been worked for years. And then the reasons why this and that are changed. And then even the reasons, you know, he had to change it for, to, to be on television where you have multiple cameras and everything's different. You're on a stage and you don't know how the producers are gonna edit this part or that part. So you're having to, rethink a routine you've done for years, almost reconstruct it so that it works in this new environment. And it's just great to see the thinking behind that and what's going through his mind. So this whole chapter is a, a great read. And then there's another version, Twilight Zone, Wild Coin, multi-gold version. And uh, that's a really interesting version too. And then at the end, there's a great routine. I was talking about the slide move. There's a sliding wild coin, which is, I think a, a fairly easy routine, intermediate, but uh, I believe I saw this on, if you know, the Coin Magic Underground uh, from Tyler Rabbit. It's a channel on YouTube. You can see a performance of this from Dr. Rubenstein. So you have 
three silver coins shown front and back. They're changed in, in the hand to a copper coin, which is shown front and back. So all three silver changed to copper front and back. And then they're all uh, dumped into the hand and changed back to silver. And then they vanish. So you can see a performance of sliding wild coin on uh, the Coin Magic Underground channel. So look that up. Uh, like I said, really easy routine, maybe intermediate, but the key is having soft coins because the move itself uh, relies on that fact. So if you can get your hands on some old coins, this is a great routine to practice. You have three color changes, well, three coins change and then they change back and then they vanish. So what more could you ask for? So that's the end of that chapter. Chapter 10 is Spellbound Routines. And I'm glad he wrote in the beginning here because I share his feelings on Spellbound. It should not be a long routine and it should have an ending. We see nowadays a lot of great, great coin magicians with fantastic technique, but so much back and forth and so much speed, it's, it's veering away from the magical and, and more towards, I don't know, an, an exhibition of skill. It's like, at what point does the audience, you know, what, what do you want the audience to think? I guess that's the main point. Do you want them to believe that coin transformed? Or that you're good at manipulating coins. Because if you do too much and you do too fast, it's not fooling anymore. It's impressive, but I guess what do you want the audience to think? Or what do you want them to believe? So he begins this chapter with sort of those thoughts on spellbound routines. And you can see with the routines he has, you know, that thinking comes through. There's there's reasoning for the transformations, and there's there's an ending to everything, like the chocolate coin. The ending is, you know, you peel the foil off of that coin, or you can give it to the audience, and the routine is done. And so there's just a ton of variations in here with spellbound routine. There's a four-way spellbound. There's a spellbound that you know, half dollar changes to 50 pennies. So moving on to chapter 11, coins through table. Uh, he has some great thoughts for coins through table, a, a classic routine that you should have a version of, or maybe create your own version of. There's a, there's a great stand up coins through table where he has a, an awesome method of showing the hand empty before going under the table to receive the coin. There's a cool uh, giant four coins through table routine here, which is more of a, would be a showpiece, but it's it's still fun to, to learn new stuff and practice that. And then chapter 12, coins across. Uh, there's a great coins across just starting out that I know for sure was on the New York Coin Magic Seminar DVDs, but the Tallahassee jumping coins. If you wanna, a fairly easy and effective coins across, no gimmicks. Uh, this is a great place to start and you'll get a lot of mileage out of this. And then impossible four coin trick, two versions of that. And there's a, a version of three fly on here that I think really interestingly solves the problem of the last coin. And I'm pretty sure that was on the DVD set as well. And then Spicolini Brothers, uh, just a fun routine with a fun story to it. Coins doing different things. There's a copper, silver, brass coins across. And then moving on, chapter 13, coin productions and vanishes. So this is, uh, these routines all involve, you know, a number of coins vanishing and then coming back or appearing somewhere else, like a coin purse, for instance. So a ton of great routines in here. And then moving on to chapter 14, coins and cards. So all these are uh, 
routines involving playing cards with coins. And there's a lot of interesting material in this chapter. Uh, predictions, revelations, uh, a few matrix routines in here. So if you if you love this type of stuff, you'll you'll find a lot of variation in this chapter. And I I've saw some new stuff that I've never seen uh, just in this chapter. And it's interesting uh, being able to do a little bit of mentalism with coins. And he shows you how to how to do that. And there's you might see in some of his work he uses uh, small stickers on coins. And that just opens up a whole new world for what coin magic can be, in my opinion. So pr predictions with markings or or having something signed and and having that object change. So a lot of cool stuff in this chapter. And then chapter 15, gaffed coins. So this is this has got a lot of classic stuff, but kind of rethought like silver extraction. Uh, the karate coin, there's a bent coin routine, magnetic coin routine. Uh, let's see, there's a signed bill through coin, which is a, there's a great handling of that. And then smileys, which is a, a, a great trick that's, there's a, a version here with half dollars, but then smileys junior with using quarters and without uh, he uses one of the old smiley face buttons as a change but then in this impromptu version it's using just a, a prepared quarter that has a drawing on it so like i was mentioning before how important it is to have impromptu stuff like this and this is a great routine that it'll play well for anybody but maybe in particular kids uh you'll just get great reactions and then the fusion routine. Then uh, chapter 16 is titled Miscellaneous. So there's this is stuff that kind of didn't fit in other places or fit in multiple places at once. So it's on its own here. So this chapter starts with the purse routine. And like I've been saying all along, there's, there's great impromptu stuff in here. And he says in the beginning, I always try to find tricks that can be performed in an impromptu manner. This routine came about since I always have with me a purse and four coins. As I developed the routine, I realized that I could extend the magic by adding phases. The first phase comprises the original routine and owes a debt of gratitude to goodbye, hello, now change, which is another routine, for a very similar vanish sequence. The phases that follow are modular and can be performed if desired. This routine is done standing, needing only a spot to put down the purse and it has never been published before or appeared on any DVD. So in this book, there's, well, I liked this routine in particular, but there's unpublished stuff in here. So like I was saying before, even if you have the New York Coin Magic Seminar DVDs, what you're getting in here is a, a lot of material that's never seen print or video. And then stuff you have seen, uh, it's improved here. So, and that's just one example. There's a blank coin routine in here. And then a black hole routine. And then mint condition, which is a, I think I saw that on the New York Coin Magic Seminar, but uh, a great idea using the Listerine uh, dissolving mints, those plastic packs. And uh, just a great example of combining good coin magic with everyday objects. I won't say organic, but germane maybe. We should start saying germane. <laughs> everyday objects. Objects that are normal to the situation. Uh, you got a nest of boxes routine in here. Uh, and there's routines in here that involve coins with, with business cards that again is seems right for the situation where you are. And then this is a cool routine, polarized plastic, which is similar to other stuff but really unique and i've never seen before and I, i've got to locate this particular type of plastic but it's it's almost like a step-by-step -step dis disappearance of a coin where they see the image of a coin and then and then the coin it's hard to explain without seeing the pictures but uh a really cool idea and 
I want to locate some of that plastic uh, to be able to do that. Then it's the nest of envelopes routine. And then finally, uh, chapter 17, coins and poker chips. Now this chapter was uh, all new stuff for me, uh, combining coins and poker chips. And I may not use much from this chapter. I may come back to it in, in a few years time, but uh, just interesting, interesting stuff going on in this chapter. And then, uh, then we get to chapter 18, which is titled Friends. So along with all of his own material in here, you get a whole chapter devoted to some other people's magic. So there's a routine in here from Mike Gallo, uh, Nathan Cranzo, John Emmanuel Francis, which if you have the New York Coin Magic Seminar DVDs, uh, this guy's crazy good. <laughs> he does a palm to palm change with six coins. And yeah, there, so in this section, you're getting some really hard stuff, but also some, some great other, sometimes impromptu coin magic. But that one in particular is very challenging. Uh, Moritz Mueller has got a routine in here. It's a, a nice vanish sequence of a coin. And then there's a variation uh, as a complete vanish. Bill Satina has got a routine in here. Uh, really long multi-phased uh, multiple coin routine. Tom Gannon. Mark D'Souza has got a, his cylinder and coins routine in here. And then Eric Ramaston, who I, I'm not I'm not familiar with, uh, but a magician from France. And this was a really cool trick. So yeah, you're not gonna skip over this chapter because there's so much interesting stuff coming from different people in here. And Brandon Wolf, uh, this is a great routine called differential. So three silver coins are produced one at a time and then they change to copper coins. And there's a really, easy method in here and it it's borrowing from a couple of other routines but it's also he's using his own techniques in here if you're familiar with brandon wolf and the end product is just uh really cool i thought i think that's something i'll be definitely using or at the very least playing with then there's a routine from lawrence godden which is his work is insane <laughs> but yeah this routine uh this will be fun to practice. There's, a, he's got some of the most difficult coin magic I, I've messed with. And uh, I'll be coming back to that. And then try Ryuzaki. Uh, people might remember he put out uh, uh, a DVD on the retention vanish. Uh, I think I saw it on Vanishing Inc. and another website. And the name changed, I think, in one place it was called retention and then another place it was called nowhere but he is a fantastic coin magician uh, from vietnam uh, he lives in the usa but so this is a a nice spellbound routine with some really cool moves in it so definitely check that one out uh, giacomo bertini has a unpublished uh, coin routine in here called coin coin million two number two so definitely check that out because uh, it hasn't been anywhere else other than this book. And then there's a great little move in here from Danny Goldsmith. Uh, if you've seen any of his work on Instagram, uh, he's released stuff with Copeland Coins and Illusionist. So if you haven't heard of him, uh, you should have by now. So a great little change of a coin in here that you could probably put into most any spellbound routine. Uh, it'll just take some thought on getting the coins into the right position. And then, you know, having the audience in the right spot, but the change itself will look like trick photography. So that that's a fun one to practice. Uh, a great routine from a great magician, uh, Leonard Ronhell, uh, using a, a coin, coins and a card. And pa -pa -pa. a Doug Brewer routine, which I love. Doug Brewer's magic. Uh, so this one involves a, uh, a coin box and it's a, a multi-phased 
routine that happens in the spectator's hand and just Doug is a, a restaurant performer so if you study his work it's it's real world and and you know it's going to be good because it's been tested in that restaurant environment or that real close-up magic environment and there's a, a great routine in here from John Kerry who does he does a little bit of coin magic but he's known for his his card magic and a routine from Bill Wish oh this is a a cool idea how do I describe it well it's an elbow servant so I'll, I'll just leave it at that but a, a really cool a really cool idea there uh, a routine here from Jay Wang I'm not familiar with with him uh, he's from China and been doing magic for a long time but there's a nice routine in here using a, a purse and multiple coins appearing and, and going back to the purse. And then Dr. Rubenstein includes in the last part of this uh, a, re a recipe from his wife. And I'll leave you uh, to read through that, but that's a, a fun little read right there. And finally, there's a routine in here from David Roth, uh, the Roth Blink Coin Routine, which was first performed on David's live in Sacramento video from 1998. So something a little bit new from David Roth in here. Now part three, the final part of the book, the bonus section is all about puns and I enjoyed reading through this part. I know it's not going to appeal to to everybody but uh, I found a lot of them to be really good and I'll be using a few of them. And then the last part of the book, chapter 20, curtain call, uh, Chinese explosion number two. So this is a, a second version of a trick that appeared earlier. And then a quarter steal, which is a, a nice way to steal a quarter from an envelope. There's a, a nice version of Miser's Dream in here. And then finally the book concludes with a final thoughts section and a little bit about the author. And then you can see in the back all of uh, the awards that he's won, books and lecture notes he's published, and DVDs and downloads. And uh, just a huge book. And like I said, this will last you for years and years. And you'll go back to this again and again. Uh, in particular, the, the first part alone with all the moves and slights. Uh, you'll be referencing that for years to come. Uh, ideas that will clean up your coin magic. Inspire new routines, hopefully. And uh, just a great, great book. And I want to officially add this to... Rick Holcomb's official list of must-have magic books. So we, you've got to have Bobo's. You've got to have Coin Magic by Richard Kaufman. David Ross, Expert Coin Magic by Richard Kaufman. The Lada book. And then finally, Michael Rubenstein's book. Uh, any one of those will get you more than enough Coin Magic you could possibly do. But I think any book that covers... The life of one man's material is is a must-have book, and so this goes on that list. And I want to thank Dr. Rubenstein for allowing me the privilege to read through this, learn from it, give my opinion on it. Uh, I'm truly thankful for for this gift, and thank you for the message inside. And uh, I hope you're doing well, and I hope you continue to improve. And uh, you're in my prayers and your family. And I just hope things start looking up again. So that's it for this week, guys. Uh, a bit of a long review, but it was a bit of a big book. So I uh, can't recommend this highly enough. And it's still available from the major magic websites for, I think, $85. But I could see this as a book that would be going out of print. So don't wait too long to get it. Uh, thank you for joining me again this week. And uh, stay tuned for the next one. Uh, I'll leave it as a surprise. See you till next time.